What is going on guys, Pal in the shop, and tonight the beginning of a new video series, the quest for 500 horsepower on a budget. We're going to be talking our Dingle Ball 2.0, this is our 479 horsepower engine, and uh, the parts breakdown on it, and what you guys can use, substitute, and how we can make it even better as we reach our quest for 500 horsepower on a budget. Let's check it out. A reoccurring question I get from subscribers uh, is a lot of the time is how do I make 500 horsepower? What do I need to make 500 horsepower? Or a lot of time either 450 horsepower, but 500 seems to be a common one. Well, 500 horsepower is easily achievable with a small block Chevy. What makes it hard is when you're trying to do it on a small budget. Uh, we, we're going we're gonna to go through each piece of this engine, which is our 479 horsepower 10 to 1 355, and we're going to talk about each component and what you can use if you're building something similar and what we can use to improve it. No, by no means is this combination optimized, in my opinion. Uh, we could have uh, done some things here uh, if I... if we wanted to optimize it to make even more power, um, but a lot of the times we're using parts that we already have, um, and basically what I wanna do in this video is let you know if those parts that you have, are they gonna be good for your horsepower goals when you guys are trying to put it together similar combinations. So in part one of this video, we're gonna talk about the foundation, our engine block. What block should you guys use? What block do you have sitting around already? Is it gonna work? Well, let's go through some questions. All right, first question we got, what size block should I start with? 350, 305, 327, 307, 400 block? Well, the, this is a pretty easy question. The easiest block to make power with is the biggest block you can get. So if you're looking at block size, a 400 block would be nice. But let me tell you about the downside about a 400 block is they're hard to find, can be quite expensive, they're oftentimes trashed, and you have to really get them sonic tested because the cylinder walls can be pretty thin. So that puts you down to the next category. What's the most plentiful? 350 blocks. Get a 350 block. I'm not saying you can't make power with a 305 or a 327 or a 307, but if we're talking budget horsepower, it's so much easier making good torque, especially in horsepower uh, with with a, a bigger block. If you're if you're trying to make good if you're trying to make 500 horsepower with like a 327. Uh, you're going to be revving it high. And when you start revving high, get things get expensive. Uh, so you're better off trying to find yourself a 350 block uh, and, and starting from that basis. If you can, like I said, if you can find a really good 400 block that is in good shape and uh, has good cylinder walls and stuff, that's a, that's a great base to start with, those big bores. Uh, and obviously aftermarket blocks are an option, but we're getting out of a budget build at that point. So if you're looking at blocks, start with a 350 block. Uh, uh, look up your casting numbers, make sure you got 350 block, an old school block like we used on the Dingle Ball 2.0 would be a 010 block. Uh, that's your tried and true two piece rear main seal. Um, this is a four bolt main and with um, passenger, uh, sorry, driver side dipstick. Next question is one piece rear main seal block or two piece rear main seal block? Uh, one piece rear main seal block were the later, so like 86, 87 and up. They, they switch things up on the blocks and then the two piece rear main seal blocks are pre that. So uh, you want like a 350 blocks would be like 1962, I think it is, to 1986, uh, 350 block in that area would be, would be really good. Um, but what do I prefer? I prefer the one piece rear main seal blocks. There's a couple reasons why I prefer those blocks. Uh, they're oftentimes they're not trashed. Even you can pull one apart with 200,000 miles on it. It won't even have ring ridge. It'll just come apart nice. Uh, they're obviously newer than a lot of these older blocks. Uh, they have the one piece rear main seal, which is less prone to leaks than the old two piece rear main seal. And the biggest advantage of it is roller cam setup. A lot of those late model blocks, uh, one piece rear main seal blocks are set up for roller cam. So they'll have a cam retaining plane in the front to hold your camshaft. So you don't, you don't have to use any sort of fancy cover or cam button. And then the lifters, uh, you don't have to use retrofit lifters. These older blocks, when we want to put roller cams in, we have to do what's called retrofit because none of them came with roller cams. They all came with flat tappet. And if we're trying to make good power, we're definitely going to want to run a roller cam. And today, a lot of people don't like flat tappet cams. Uh, so with these late model one piece rear main seal blocks, uh, unlike this one, I had to use retrofit uh, lifters, which are quite expensive. You can probably outfit your whole roller uh, cam setup for the price of just a set of uh, retrofit roller lifters. So that's a, that's a huge 
uh, advantage with the one piece rear main seal blocks. One thing I forgot to mention earlier about the one piece blocks, one sort of downside here, we got an 880 blocks as a later Vortec block. The one downside is a lot of the one piece uh, rear main seal blocks are not drilled for a fuel pump. Uh, so you'll have to run an electric fuel pump. I know some guys out there have a jig for drilling these. I've never done it. I've never had one done, but just keep that in mind. Some of the 880 or most of the 880 blocks don't have the fuel pump. Some of the early 638 blocks, or a lot of them are drilled for the fuel pump. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're looking at blocks. I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, but if you're running electric pump or anything, you don't have to worry about that. Or you can add an electric pump. A lot of guys get the ones that bolt on right to the side of the block here. Uh, so it's not really a big deal, just something to keep in mind. A uh, common question I get when I recommend the one piece remain seal blocks is how strong is a one piece remain seal block? There's lots of things on the internet about uh, how strong are the, the blocks are with the, the later blocks because they did remove metal. And that's 100% right. The, the later blocks actually from like 1980 and up, the blocks got lighter. Same with cylinder heads. They started or prior to that, they started taking metal out of cylinder heads too. Uh, so they did remove metal in areas uh, from the blocks or the one piece blocks not as strong. Uh, that's kind of a tricky question. Um, a good sonic tested two piece rear main seal block uh, that hasn't had any core shift or anything like that old school block like this 010, they're really strong. They have lots of metal in lots of areas and they're good. Uh, we can start talking about nickel content and stuff, but just to talk about as a whole, they're really strong. The one piece rear main seal blocks, they do have less metal in them, but I find them more consistent, especially the later 880 blocks. Uh, the, the metallurgy is better. Um, they're more, they're more consistent as far as less, uh, less casting shifts and stuff like that. Uh, but as a whole, they are not quite as strong as the two piece rear main seal blocks, but at a 500 horsepower, uh, level, there'd be no problem. I've run those blocks at, with strokers at 500 horsepower. I've ran them, uh, supercharged. Uh, 500 horsepower or plus more almost 600 horsepower never had an issue uh, this block back here on my turbocharged motor is a one-piece remain seal 638 block uh, it is half filled uh, with to the coolant ja jackets but prior to that I ran it supercharged with no issues uh, so I don't know what the horsepower limit of that is with it with it half filled uh, basically use like block filler it fills half the water jackets up to kind of rigid up uh, factory block um, I don't know what the limit of it is yet. Right now, as it sits, it's making about 650 foot-pounds of torque. So once we go to the bigger turbo and stuff, we might find the limit. I don't know. But at 500 horsepower, I have no issues running any one-piece remain seal block as long as the block is in good sound condition without any weird funky stuff going on. Another question I've seen on the internet, and uh, this is a great question, is do the later blocks have shorter cylinders? Uh, this is something that I used to believe was true too, and I don't know if I just believed it because that's what I was told. I'm not 100% sure, but the one day I decided a few years ago, I had a whole bunch of blocks sitting in the shop. I had um, uh, a bunch of 010 blocks, a bunch of uh, 638 blocks, uh, 880 blocks, and even a dart block. And I measured the shortest part of that cylinder to see if there was any big difference. They were all like five and five eight. So I think that's might be a myth. If you guys have, to, if you guys can shed any light on that, if you know maybe certain years there were, were shorter cylinders or longer cylinders, depending. But as far as 350 blocks that I measured here, I couldn't find any difference between block to block. So, and the reason people were claiming that was an issue was that they were saying the late blocks, you couldn't run a shorter rod, you'd have to run a longer rod or you'd get, you know, the piston would get cocked in the bore. I have never ran into that personally. So I don't know where that came from and I don't know what the deal is with that. So if you have any, any light that you can shed on that for me, please let me know uh, in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear results. But in my experience, I've measured them and I found no real difference in cylinder length is uh, two bolt main versus four bolt main. And if you're not familiar with what that is, you, you might have heard it but not understand what it is. On a four bolt main block, these three inner caps will have an extra bolt. So the cap will extend out and it will have an extra bolt on each end. So these 
inner caps will have four bolt mains. The two outer block uh, caps stay the same, just like this one. But you can see this block is what we call a two bolt main because all the caps have two bolts. Um, these blocks don't don't shy away from a two bolt main block. That's kind of the old school mentality is uh, you don't you don't want a two bolt main block for performance. I've ran supercharged again, two bolt main blocks. Uh, no problem. I would take a good sonic tested cylinder wall, perfect shift two bolt main over a half kind of shifty janky four bolt main any day. Um, if you have a four bolt main, that's great, but don't shy away from a two bolt main. An upgrade we did on this 383 stroker we're doing here, as you can see, is I put uh, ARP studs in it uh, just to add a little bit more rigidity to the two bolt main, especially if you start getting close to that 500 horsepower level. Is it necessary? Honestly, probably not. It just It's just a nice upgrade. Uh, just remember though, if you add these studs, whether it be a two bolt main or a four bolt main you add studs to, make sure you get your block a line honed because the clamping force is a little different on the studs and it'll throw that line hone off. So if you're sending your block to the machine shop, make sure you even get them to put the studs in or have the studs already put in and tell them that you want that uh, main uh, saddle alignment check because uh, the studs will throw that off. But it is a nice upgrade if you're you know really starting or planning on pushing on it. So I hope this video helps shed some light on your decision for your engine block and maybe it answered some questions that you were wondering about. Uh, at the end of the day, build the biggest engine you can. It's easier to make power with a 350 plus engine make torque. The one piece rear main seal blocks, I prefer the one piece rear main seal blocks just because of the cheap, the cheaper option of putting a roller cam in it. This horsepower level, you'll want to use a roller cam. Not saying you don't have to, you can do this power with flat tab, but we've done it, It's it's but it's just, you have to go rowdier and more RPM to get the same sort of horsepower. Um, the other thing is two bolt main. Don't shy away from a two bolt main block. If you find a good two bolt main block and that's what you have already, don't throw it away. Use it. And if you're worried about it, put ARP main studs in it, have it line honed. At the end of the day, there are options. We can make things better. Uh, the, the key thing is get yourself a good machine shop. They'll be able to check the block out properly, have the block decked to nine inches, have it bored and honed with, with honing plates. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the block is the foundation and having a good block, but when we put everything together and build it properly, that's this, that's where we make power and that's where we build reliability. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, please, if you're, if you're into this stuff, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate all my subscribers and we're going to keep rolling out videos on our quest to build 500 horsepower on a bike.